Hello friends, welcome back to my channel Mukesh English. This is Mukesh Soni. In this video, we are going to have a discussion of the third semester degree examination March April 2023 Open Elective English, Functional English Grammar and Study Skills Duration 2 hours 30 minutes and the maximum marks is 60. So this question paper is the third semester examination in the same time March April 2023 titled Functional English Grammar and, and Study Skills. Before that, let's have a glance at the question paper. There are three sections. One sec first section, functional English grammar. Second one, writing skills. And the third one is here, reading skills. Now the part one, the part one of the question paper has the 10 questions and each question is for two marks. So totally, the part one has the 20 marks question paper. Uh, sorry, the 20 marks questions. Question number one. How many parts of speech are there in English? Very simple question. There are eight parts of speech in English. These are noun, noun, pronoun, adjective, adverb, verb, preposition, conjunction, and interjection. What are the different different phases of uh, sorry? What are the different phases of writing process? There are few phases of writing process like planning a text, finding materials. First and foremost, planning a text, then finding materials then drafting, reviewing, then editing, and finally, finalizing the draft. That's a phase of writing process. Then what is the physical behavior of a speaker? So generally, the moment we talk about physical behavior, it refers to the body language, like eye contact, posture, gesture, facial expression, uh, body movement. So this is here refers to the, the, the physical behavior of a speaker. Then define intensive listening. Intensive listening is a method of reading through which reader acquire, which readers acquire in depth, thorough detail, and the comprehensive, pursual, and assimilation of writing piece. Simple way, very, very in-depth reading. To read intensively demands having an all-round focus in the concentration while reading a piece of a paper, a piece of information in order to have the best available understanding of the content, content and concepts. Question number five, what's the difference between hearing and listening? Hearing refers to one's ability to pursue sound by receiving vibrations through ears. Listening in something, something is done very consciously that involves the analysis and the understanding of the sounds you hear. Simple language, hearing, which we listen without attentively, without attention. Listening, where we hear, where we listen with, with much attention and we try to comprehend. Then name the three stages of reading. So there are three stages of reading is here. Pre-reading, while reading and post-reading. Then what is scanning? Scanning implies a reading technique in which one takes a quick look of the document to find out the specific information from a written material. Question number eight, what are the different types of reading? Scheming, scanning, intensive reading, and extensive reading. They're also called as the subskills of reading. Question appears, which are the subskills? Which are the different types of reading? So there are four, four types of reading, four subskills of reading, scheming, scanning, intensive reading, and extensive reading. Question number nine, Name the different kinds of adverbs. Adverbs of manner, adverbs of time, adverb of place, adverb of frequency, adverb of purpose, adverb of degree. Last question. What's the difference between stress and syllable? Syllable is a sound segment higher than the phoneme, but different from the word or phoneme. For example, the word grammar is made up of two syllables, gra and mer. So in the first syllable, gra, there are two consonant and one vowel sound. In the other one, mer, is made of one consonant and one vowel sound. Stress means what? The degree of force with which a speaker pronounces a sound or syllable is called as a stress. The degree with which you try to pronounce a sound or a syllable, that's called a kind of stress. The rhythm of the language is based on stress. Stress is the intensity or prominence given by the syllable. So these are the 20 marks questions. Now we are moving to the next segment is here.
five marks, four questions out of five questions into opt here, four questions, five marks, four questions. Now draft an email. You need to draft an email to your friend about your preparations for the examination. So email format to address subject and the salutation, dear Rama. So you can go through this email, write very simple and straightforward without any grammatical error. You can pause the video, you can go through the body of the email. Then the finally we say here, the warm regards, Namita, that's a complimentary close. So first two address, then uh, dear, then subject and the body of the email, dear sir, content. And then finally, with regards, warm regard and the name of the writer. So this is how you have to write the email. Next question is here, dialogue dialogue writing between you and your mother mentioning that due to your illness you cannot attend the examination that means to see you are suffering from a severe illness severe illness and severe illness and you are unable to write a write the examination so you need to develop the dialogue between mother and the mother and you so you can go through uh, this dialogue on your screen you can pause the video so when you are developing the dialogue what you should do you should use a simple language and possibly you mention the expressions if possible and try to use the the appropriate um, punctuation marks appropriate punctuation mark and use quite simple language informal language to some extent where it's very easy to understand so the five marks question you have email writing five marks five marks question you have here dialogue writing now the question number three here here again, this very scoring question, the next third one is here, scoring question. You have five sentences and you need to identify the, the tense, the tense in the particular sentence. Question number one here, children like chocolates. So it's a simple present tense. He ate an apple, simple past tense. She had been waiting for her friend Past perfect continuous. Why continuous? ING form. I will meet you tomorrow. Simple future tense. She has been traveling in this flight since two days. Present perfect continuous tense. Present perfect continuous tense has been traveling. Then, so th these are the five marks questions. Five questions, five marks. So first five marks, email writing, then dialogue writing, then the identifying the tense. So all the three are very scoring one. Next is here, what is the definition of speaking and which are the barriers to speaking, of speaking? Speaking is an interactive process where information is shared and if necessary, uh, reacted by the listener as well. So I have listed here a few barriers of listening. Let's go through here one by one. First barrier is, is here, lack of confidence. So self-doubt or low self-esteem can also stop your ability, affect your ability to speak effectively. Anxiety or nervousness also plays very effective role as a, as a hurdle in the speaking process, sometimes like shaky hands, racing heart, dry mouths, then lack of preparation. If you're not prepared, what's going to happen while speaking, the nervousness can be reflected on your face. Then language barriers. Sometimes if you belong to other state and you are unable to uh, speak or unable to find the vocabulary, unable to pronounce the words properly, or maybe we do some sort of grammatical errors. Then physical barriers. Physical barriers like if we have some speech uh, impediments, like some people, they get, they get like they cannot speak continuously. Um, then hearing impair, impairment or some sort of medical conditions which may affect your speaking cultural difference obviously the cultural norms and communication styles can also lead to misunderstanding when speaking to individuals from different backgrounds lack of clarity failing to organize your thoughts and structure your speech can lead to some confusion not only to the speaker but also to the audience or the listener then emotional barrier sometimes anger sadness stress they can affect your ability to communicate calmly and rationally. Then sometimes we use over usage of jargons. We use too much technical, terminological word and the next person cannot understand. 
in effect to novel non verbal communication your body language sometimes your tone of the voice your expression facial expression eye contact if there this is not proper your message is not going to be reached and it's it's a failure of your speaking skill then audience expectation sometimes audience expect too much so you need to see the background of the audience then you need to develop your speech then communication apprehension some people have a general fear or apprehension about speaking in public they have uh, like they have a kind of uh, they cannot speak public they cannot speak publicly they have stage fear so called stage fear so this is a communication apprehension so these are the barriers to speaking next question we have here explain the four kinds of reading skills so it has multiple questions reading skills sub skills of reading types of reading all all of them have the same answer and the answer is your scheming scanning intensive reading and extensive reading so it's a very repeated question this question is very important scheming scheming refers to to taking a quick glance at something or looking at the things on the surface similarly scheming process in reading involves looking at the text or a surface level without going in depth it refers to the process of reading only main ideas within a text to get an overall impression of the content by doing so the reader eliminates the unnecessary details in the text like stories for examples etc scanning unlike scheming scanning is a process of examining a very specific information within a text where a quick glance helps in obtaining relevant information without reading the whole text the basic purpose of the scanning is to extract only the required information from the text irrespective of whether the reader has understood the text or not third one is here intensive reading intensive reading is a method of reading through which the readers acquire in depth thorough detail and the comprehensive knowledge about the piece of writing to read intensively it demands a kind of all round focus and concentration while reading a piece of paper piece of writing and this is required to have the best available understanding of the concept and the content fourth one is here extensive reading extensive reading is a form of reading which seeks to cover a large quantity of text usually with the aim of grasping a general understanding of the book to read extensively means to say to read widely so these are the so these are the four types of reading or the four sub skills or the four process of reading scheming scanning intensive reading and extensive reading so the same question is also asked for the 10 marks now we have the 10 marks questions so you have here out of three questions you need to opt two questions for the 10 marks so 20 marks so the first question very simple question in this question paper what is noun and how many nouns do we have in english define each one of them so noun means what noun is defined as a word referring to the names of person place thing state or quality the noun is a part of speech this that can be classified into both singular and plural noun now let's have some examples of noun like people somebody's name place place name animals name birds name aquatic reptiles etc ideas evolution invention objects or things name they are all nouns so types of noun number 1 proper noun nouns which are used to name a person place thing specifically they are called as proper noun and proper noun always begin with a capital letter so for example my name is rose so it's a proper noun this is my dog bruno it's a specific pet david come back from minsk so name of a specific place louis philip is a brand name name brand of men's clothing particular clothing brand second is your common nouns common nouns are those nouns which are refers to a generic item group or place that means unlike proper nouns they are not 
unlike proper nouns they are not used to identify specific people place objects common nouns are not capitalized unless they appear at the beginning of a sentence example i bought a pen yesterday so common object pen i'm going to school common place school all 10 employees showed up to work today so common group 10 employees the car is out of fuel common items that is car and fuel third one is your singular noun that means to say single person single place single animal single bird single object so which specify only the single plural noun obviously it here refers to the number of people place things so generally it's mentioned here by using s or es so i need some apples did you find the boxes plural noun boxes apples countable nouns which you can count which can measured like 10 packets right a dozen eggs or you can say uh, around seven in the morning uncountable noun which cannot be counted this category has very concrete and abstract nouns for example homework it's very specific not specific cannot be counted but then a cup of tea you can't count one one tea two three we are facing terrible weather today you can't count weather now the collective nouns so a collective noun is a naming word which is used to denote a group of objects animals or the people so we have collective noun for groups of animals groups of people groups of things objects so lions sheep pride of lions flock of sheep uh, sheep a brand of musicians a brand of directors a pair of shoes a chain of mountain a fleet of ships so these are this is the example of the nouns okay and the last one is here concrete noun means to say which refers to some sort of object which are material cannot be perceived by any human sense for example the book is on the table then i have a cup of coffee sharon open the window hardy goes to school by bus abstract noun means to say the five senses which cannot be perceived by even the five senses of the human body like love is strong emotion you can't e express you need to experience it honesty is the best policy it takes a lot of courage to raise your voice and stand up against injustice you should not misuse the freedom you are given so these are the nouns which we have discussed nine types of noun definition and types of noun with detail next question we have here which are the strategies and the methods to improve reading skills so improving reading skill is very much essential for the comprehension critical thinking and overall knowledge acquisition so we have some strategies and some methods to enhance reading skills number one vocabulary self selection strategy vss improving vocabulary is essential to develop an advanced level of learning a language this strategy allows the readers to uh, choose any word from a text which they are reading and learn more about it readers maintaining a vocabulary logbook or a book to record such words which helps them to learn these words in the future as well second techniques we have here story map a story map is a technique which is similar to mind mapping where graphic representations are used to visually organize a text for example you are reading a novel or short story of the particular syllabus so what you can do you can make you can make make a map of different plot characters setting so that will be called as a story map and that's going to help you to comprehend the story to understand the story in a very better manner compare and contrast diagrams this strategy helps in establishing you will learn the similarities and the differences to and to and the differences that's going to en encourage the deep thinking process among the readers then you have there are next we have sq3r method sq and 3r so this is a very important strategy strategy to improve the reading comprehension so number 1 survey query read recall review this is the sq3r survey the first step to reading involves a quick preview of the text 
This could be reading the introduction, titles, and headings, and looking at pictures and the charts. Surveying helps in activating any minor information that are previously new, previously you previously know about the text. Second question is a query. A survey kindles readers' curiosity, leading to the text next step. Query. The reader starts making predictions about the text while asking questions, which are answered after the comprehension, after the completion of reading. So, when the human mind human mind is actively searching for answers, it becomes an it becomes engaged in the learning process, which in turn helps in active reading of the text. Then read, all right. The goal of this step is to begin reading with a few paragraphs of one section at a time, depending on how dense the material is. In this step, it's important to search for answers because the reading goes on; it's it keeps on moving on. While reading, identify certain keywords also help in in remembering the content which is being to be which is going to be read. Next, recall the fourth one is here recall. After reading a few, after reading a few paragraphs of one section, it's very important to stop reading and take a time to recall. That's going to summarize the section in one's own own words, as if the reader was sharing the main idea of the text with someone who has never heard. So this method helps the readers to gain better control of the text. So last one is here review. Once the reading is complete, it's very important to take some time to review. The process of reviewing is a very in important act of evaluating process, which can be understood through discussion, writing reviews, etc. Maybe the reader can write a brief summary or the review of the text to engage in a discussion with a fellow reader who has heard the read the text. This method is un this method is seen in a classroom. when the question answer session is going on and this is the easiest way to review the complete reading process so this is the method and the techniques of uh, reading process now the last question we have what is skimming scanning extensive reading or intensive reading or sub skills of reading so this question we have already discussed in the part 2 question where we had discussed the four kinds of reading skills same answer skimming scanning extensive reading and the and the intensive reading so please refer to the four kinds of reading skills in the part 2 question paper so friends this is how i have tried to solve the third semester third semester functional english and functional functional english question paper of march april 2023 in the description box i already mentioned the model question paper and the first semester question paper and this is the third semester question paper of functional english grammar skills so thank you so much if you like this video click on like button write in the comment box if you are not yet subscribe my channel please do subscribe